all right so hello everybody um i know that i told you on instagram um as well as on facebook that i'll be going live this month in the month of august answering your questions that you asked on instagram um and so as i wait for uh, more of you to join me on today i want to give a introduction of who i am just kind of give you a backdrop of um the questions that i'll be answering today and if you get on Go ahead and ask questions as well as I have time and a time a lot. Um, I will be able to uh, answer some of those questions for you. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm super excited to be able to start this q and I know it's a little late in the month. Um, it's kind of mid-August right now. And uh, I know it's been great expectation for me to get on and answer all of, you que all of your questions. First and foremost, I got so many questions questions from you all i got so many questions from you all um i was bombarded and just overwhelmed by the amount of questions that i received <laughs> uh in regards to just counseling questions and soul questions and um just how to heal and all these different things so i wanted to make sure that i did give uh, my time to answer these questions for you because it's very important for me as a counselor to make sure that those questions are answered for you and you feel supported in your journey to healing and that you feel supported as you venture off into unseen or unknown known territory and try something new in your life so um, we can go ahead and just get started I want to give it formal introduction of who I am um, I'm Raven Knoll and um, I am a Christian counselor and life coach um, this is my me stepping out of the boat and doing my own personal brand I am the founder and the creator of the wholeness pursuit which many of you may or may not know about um, and we've been doing the wholeness pursuit now for about three years or so I've been doing the wholeness pursuit um, I think since 2016. So I started off as a personal uh, blog and that turned into more of a business structure and reaching more people. So once you get on here, please say hello. I love to see who's on um, so that I can chit chat with you and uh, get to know you a little bit more. So you can look forward to me doing more live Q&As throughout the month of August. Um, I definitely will be doing more Q&As throughout the month of August and answering your questions. So at, I know there's a couple people that just got on. I'm Raven Noel, Christian counselor and life coach, um, and I'll be answering your questions today. So if you do have any questions, let me know. So first and foremost, okay, let's start this off with just the questions that are being asked. I am getting questions about everything, people, everything, relationships. I'm getting questions about identity. I'm getting questions about, <laughs> um, you know, when to start the counseling process. I'm getting all kind of questions. So I wanted to give and lay a foundation um, before I get into real, the, really the nitty gritty of some of these questions, I wanted to lay a foundation and answer some of the just some of the general questions that I was getting about counseling. Okay, so number one, hey Kimberly, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so here we go with the first question. All right, so the first question is: Is counseling necessary? Okay, now we are in a time in I would say history with mental health. And mental health awareness and, and mental health wellness and all that is at an all-time high right we can go through trends back and forth when it comes to um, just culture and just different things that's popular at one time things that are not popular at another time so right now we are in like an epidemic where people are really talking about mental health and why it's important and people are really wanting to seek out mental health and get some clarity about that and they're realizing that they don't have to live dysfunctionally they don't have to live with the um, same issues that their mother or father had they don't have to go through the same cycles of life that they've seen those prior to them experience so people are now reaching out and saying hey i want to do something different i want to heal i don't want to live this life i want a better quality of life i want to be able to experience more in my life i don't want to walk around depressed and upset and and all these different things so people are now becoming more um more more courageous to be able to step out and say you know what i want to get help i want help all right so question number one is counseling necessary okay now many of you may be like that's an easy question but some people are still questioning is counseling necessary for their life all right so this is my question to you do you have a pulse <laughs> And if you have a pulse, then then counseling is necessary for you, okay? If you have a pulse, that tells me that you have life history. And if you have some type of life, life history, that tells me that you've gone through something. You could have had the best upbringing in the world, both parents in the household.
household, you know, fed with a golden spoon and you're still going to experience something. Most people don't have that testimony or that story or they can't even say that was their life. A lot of uh, in different cultures, there's only one parent in the home. If you were fortunate to have two parents in the home, those two parents could have been dysfunctional as well. So we don't want to just assume because we had a good life or what um, society says is a good life that everything is good and gravy, right? We have to look at the things that happen behind the scenes, all right? If you have both your mother and your father in your, in, your, in your household or if you just had one parent, what was that parent like? Were they affectionate? Were they angry? Did they communicate with you? Were they, um, did they affirm you? Did you just stay in the house and do nothing? Were they, you know, open to communicating with you about their emotions and their feelings? What different things that you're, you know, you have to look at the family history as well. So even if, and for those that just are getting on, I'm talking about is counseling necessary, okay? So I'm kind of giving a backdrop to start off these Q&As to give you a foundation to work with, all right? So share this if you want with um, all of your followers and friends. I would love to have as many people on tonight as possible because I want to really display and to promote why counseling is so necessary for people, okay? So the question is, is counseling necessary? All right, so even if you did have both, if you even if you did have both parents in the household, we have to look at how functional those parents were. were. Even though your father was there, was he a provider or not a provider? You know, even though your father was there, did he talk to you or did he not talk to you? Did he ever call or, or check up on you? Any of those things. Was your mom angry? You know, was she a woman that nagged a lot? Was she a woman full of pain because of who your father was? And if you had a single parent in the household, that causes even more issues. A lot of times children have to grow up themselves. They have to uh, teach themselves. They have to raise themselves because there's one parent in the household working two or three jobs or they're just completely checked out because their life is so hectic it's hard for them to be in tune and a part of their children's lives so no matter how your upbringing was there's always some type of issue unless you had Jesus himself <laughs> you know unless you had something like that as your parent, you know, more than likely there was flawed issues that happened in your household. And those are things that, that cause us, um, uh, it causes us to have to go to counseling and to see a therapist and different things of that nature because of our upbringing. Most counseling issues, dysfunctional issues that we deal with all start in childhood. We have to go back to the root of what happened. We have to go back to, okay, what did life look like? What happened to me? Was I honest about what happened to me? Have I suppressed or repressed emotions from my past? Is there trauma? And I'm going to tell you about 99.9% .9 of people have experienced some sort of trauma. Trauma has different layers. Trauma has different definitions um, as to what it means to each person or how trauma affects each life is different. So your trauma may not look like the person's trauma next to you or and that trauma may, may not look like the person next to that person. But... Anything that you were not emotionally prepared to handle will produce some sort of trauma in your life, okay? So if you were a young girl or a young boy and, you know, you were introduced to some type of um, uh, 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 pornography or if you were introduced to some type of just um, something too young for you to experience, that produces trauma in people's lives. If you were opened up to abuse at a very young age, you know, in the black community, a lot of times there are... Uh, we get whoopings, right? You get whoopings in the black community. And sometimes that can cause traumatic experiences for children because parents take out their anger on their children without explanation as to why are you hurting me, you know? And so we don't talk about, you know, hey, maybe you could have did this better, you know, maybe you could have responded better as a child or, you know, why am I getting a whooping? Why is this happening to me? You know, we don't explain those things to children sometimes and that produces trauma and that trauma as you grow up continues to grow with you, okay? So there's just different layers of what can happen and so I'm answering the question, is counseling necessary? And so I'm kind of giving you different scenarios to let you know these are things that people believe that they don't need counseling for but when you don't deal with these issues, it raises you, okay? So if you have trauma that impacted your life at the age of five and you've never dealt with it and you're 35 you have a 30-year wound <laughs> that is growing and flustering and has never been dealt with and you're just piling on more and more and more and more and more issues so we have to deal with the root issues of what's going on okay so it's not just hey you know 
you know, my mom was this way, you know, she was angry sometimes and she was, you know, pretty mean to me and all that. But, you know, that's just my mom. People do that, but you don't realize that those seeds were planted and you wonder why now as an adult, you're super angry or now as an adult, you don't really um, work well under pressure or people that have that type of personality. It produces things through us. So we have to be aware of, okay, I have some childhood issues. Things were not perfect. Let me go ahead and, and deal with or... Let me go ahead and talk to someone about these things that happened in my life. So we have to be willing to be open. And I know that counseling is not always looked at as something that's good because there's a stigma that if you get counseling, that means that there's an issue with you. You know, that means you're crazy or you can't handle the things that happen to you in life or whatever that may be. People say that all, you know, why do you need to go to a counselor? Your life wasn't that bad. You have no idea what happened to me and what it, and how it impacted impacted me and how is it how it's affecting me today okay so we have different issues and I'm going to go through that a little bit later because I wanted to just kind of set a foundation for you but there's so many things that's produced from us not going to get the help that we need I'm letting you know right now there is nothing wrong with seeing a counselor there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying you know what I am 30 years old, I am 40 years old, and I'm still dealing with issues from when I was 10. You know, I'm still dealing with issues from when I was 12. I still have not forgiven my father or my abuser or whoever, a past relationship when I was 20. I'm still dealing with the effects of all those different things. I'm still dealing with, you know, addiction. I'm still dealing with the cycles of pain and depression and anxiety. So either you can suffer alone and in silence and continue to live this life that's tormented, or you can take a step forward and say, you know what? I want to live a better quality of life. Do I have to yell to the world that I am going to get counseling? Do I have to yell to the world and say, hey, I got issues and I need help? No. But what you can do is going to take a step, do some research, call someone, talk to your accountability friends or family members or something. And let them know I'm moving forward in this process. Can you support me through this? Whoever that is that you can trust. And it, honestly, if you feel like no one around you, you can trust. You can't trust anyone that's around you. That's a telltale sign that you have an issue as well, right? We need counseling at this point. If I can't, if I can't look around my circle or my family members and I can't point out one person I can be honest and real with and vulnerable and say, you know what, I think I need to go to counseling. That is a telltale sign that you do need to go to counseling because there's trust issues there. And those trust issues, if you can't trust anyone, is deeply rooted in something that is far beyond surface level. So we have to deal with what's going on behind the scenes deep that has been planted years ago more than likely that causes you not even to be able to say i can't even have a conversation with a friend yeah you need a safe place absolutely a family member and be honest about my journey and where i'm at okay so that is one of the reasons why counseling is necessary so i kind of gave you a backdrop on that okay so and i said for all those that are just now joining if you have a pulse okay if you have a pulse that means that you need to go to counseling. Why? Because you have a life history. And anyone that has life history, something within all those years you've been alive has happened to you that you need to be able to process through with someone that is trained and skilled to help you. Friendships are great. Family members are great. But sometimes they're not going to challenge you in the areas that you need challenged in, in order to uh, bring forth what's actually wrong or what's happening. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about question number three or two i'm sorry can i heal myself all right so this is a question i got on instagram that someone asked and said can i heal myself <laughs> now here's my answer to that there is a trend going around that i believe called uh, self healers where people are trying to heal themselves through different methods and all those different things i'm not going to knock anything that that people feel are, is necessary for their life or they feel is beneficial or helping them if you feel like you're able to self heal and that's helping you go right ahead but here's my opinion on self-healing you can only do so much by talking to yourself okay you can only do so much by journaling by yourself you can only do so much by you know being in this place of emotional and mental healing by yourself there's only so far you can go why 
Number one, you're not going to ask yourself the hard questions and be honest. That's the thing right there. Okay, that's number one. A lot of times we have suppressed and repressed emotions that we do not remember or we refuse to touch because they're so difficult for us or trauma causes us to put them in the back of our mind and never remember them until it's something triggers it. You know, PTSD is one of those things as well that you are triggered um, by the same uh, offense that happened before. So just different things like that. So you're not going to challenge yourself in those areas your brain and your mind and your build and your makeup has said that's a touchy subject that hurts don't go there again okay so there's no way that you can heal yourself if automatically you have already uh, your brain is already programmed that this is a hard thing this is a this is a difficult thing this is a hurtful thing this is a painful thing and I don't want to go there anymore so I'm trying to put it as practical as possible for you without giving all these different terms and terminology so that's what your brain tells you so by you trying to self heal and say you know what I have abandonment issues and I want to heal myself well <laughs> Who's going to ask you the hard questions to challenge your abandonment issues? Who's going to ask you the hard questions to challenge the way that you're thinking? Who's going to ask you the hard questions to challenge your perspective? Who's going to ask you the hard questions to challenge your history? As people and as humans, it's normal for us to try to self-protect. And if we're going through levels of pain and just areas of pain, sometimes it just hurts too much where we're like, you know what? I'm not going to touch that. I'm, I'm going to leave that for next week. You know what? That one, I'm going to leave for next week. And we never return to it right so there's only so much that you can do for yourself you can open up and say i'm a journal through some of my some of the um abuse that happened to me you can open up and say you know i'm going to talk to to a friend about you know uh certain things but i'm only going to go so far transparency and vulnerability is a real issue for people so if you're not transparent and vulnerable with whoever whoever it is that you're talking to or yourself how are you going to self-heal so with counseling there's techniques that we use to be able to say okay hey we got to pinpoint this because we realize that the way that you responded to me asking you a question about your mother body language what came out of your mouth you know if you were very short or if you were detailed all those different things so as counselors we're trained to prick at what those issues are we're trained to say let's go deeper we're trained to say you know what expound on that issue you know give me a little bit more information about your mother why is that making you emotional right now why are you crying about that or you know why are you know, why is that a touchy subject? You know, or why are you shutting down right now? You know, why are you not able to look me in the eye anymore when you talk about this person? So these are things that we're trying to do to help you realize, okay, that is an issue. But if you try to self heal, you're not challenging yourself to be to say, you know what, I just realized I shut down when I start talking about my mother, you're not going to notice those things, right? These are things that you've been programmed for years to do. If you've been, if you've had an issue with a, a your mother, a father, a grandparent, or, or just a family member in general, since you were 10 years old and you never dealt with it that becomes normalized for you right your behavior your interactions um how you process the pain that becomes normalized to you so it looks normal and so as counselors we're trying to tell you that that is dysfunctional when you believe that it's functional <laughs> right we're trying to let you know you know what I know you think that that's normal but that's actually not normal behavior and so if you're gonna self heal you've been the way that you are for so many years that you think that everything you do is quite all right you don't see anything wrong with the way that you're responding you don't see anything wrong with your emotions you don't see anything wrong with the fact that you know you have suppressed or repressed emotions you don't see anything wrong with crying spells or you being angry out of out of the blue you don't see anything wrong with your mood swings up and down you don't see anything wrong with the fact that you shut down around people you don't see anything wrong that you're isolated so these are things that you don't see anything wrong with because it's normalized for you but when you talk to someone else that's trained or a professional, we point pinpoint those things as that's not normal, right? That's not okay. That is an issue that you need to deal with. That's rejection. That's abandonment. That's guilt. That's shame, right? That's um that's a level of unforgiveness. You know, that's trauma. We can point those things out and say, you know what, that's an issue. Let's deal with it. So you can't necessarily self-heal, right? We can't really just self-heal. We can only do so much. Um excuse me, as we journey through this healing process. But if you feel like self healing has helped you, <laughs> I am never going to knock anything that someone says that they feel like is helpful for them. But I will encourage you to seek other help. Okay, so you can only do so much as a person going through your own stuff. 
as you as you come to that you know blockage of i've gone as far as i can go reach out get some help do something different so that you get different results right you've been living with yourself for how many years now <laughs> and it hasn't worked a hundred percent for you to be completely healed or whatnot so we have to deal with what's going on and get a little bit more help as we go through it all right and so with counseling, we collaborate together. The counselor and the counselee, we're working together with you. We're on your team. So when when people are always like, you know, is counseling necessary? And, you know, can I just do this myself? You know, you, we're working as a team. And we were never, as humans, created to be isolated. That's not how you get free from things. That's not how you get healed from things. That's not how you overcome difficult situations, painful life situations. That's not how you overcome. Being isolated is an issue in itself. So you want to partner with someone else that's like, like, you know what, I can help you through this. I can walk you through this. We can heal, you know, whatnot, and be able to give you more information, insight, direction, whatever, to help you grow as a person and heal from whatever it is that you need to be healed from, all right? So here is question number three, all right? How do I begin the healing process? So out of all of you that's on here right now, I want you to go ahead and put in the comments for me. Have any of you or do you feel like you are stuck when it comes to your healing process? If you feel like you're stuck, put yes. If you feel like you are not stuck, just say, you know, I'm moving forward. I'm doing well, whatever in your healing process. So if you feel like you're a person that's stuck in your healing process and you're like, how do I even begin this healing process? I want you to put, you know, in the comments, yes, that's me or I'm stuck or, you know, I need help with that area. I want to know how popular this question is for people. Definitely stuck. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. I see that. Okay, I see a couple people saying, yes, I'm stuck. Um, yes, I need help in that area. Good. Anybody else? Do you feel like you're stuck? And listen, this is a point for you to be transparent and vulnerable. Take a step and say, you know what? <laughs> this isn't working for my life necessarily. I need a little bit of help. So don't be afraid to speak up and say that you need help because there's many people out there just like you that are like, you know what? I want to be healed. I want to I want a better quality of life. I, I don't want to live this way anymore. So just speak up and say that. And that's the first step of just being honest with yourself and saying, you know, I got issues. We all got issues, right? And I need that help. Okay, I need help in that area. I'm stuck. Great, 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 great. Okay, so I see that a, a few of you do have that issues where issue where you feel stuck. So these are things that I get from my clients all the time. You know, they're always like raving, you know what? I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know where I'm going with my life. I just feel like I'm just out here wondering. I get my, my clients always tell me as well, you know, I'm just unhappy with the quality of my life. I'm in pain. I'm hurting. You know, I just feel like I lack direction. All these different things that I get from my clients all the time. And so I want you to know that's quite normal. So that's first and foremost. It's quite normal to feel like you lack understanding of purpose. It's quite normal to feel like, you know what, I don't know where my life is going. I don't know what I'm doing. It's quite normal to, to feel like, you know what, every day I wake up and I just feel like I'm sad or I'm upset or I'm just not complete or there's an emptiness or loneliness within me. That is a lot of the population, okay? So I don't want you to feel like, you know, something's just wrong with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know why I'm this way or what's happening with me or whatnot. That's a that's a quite popular issue within the population, okay? So here's my thing for you. If you can realize that there is an issue that you're having and there's something, you know, within you, if it's pain, if it's emotion, if it's something mental, whatever, if you can pinpoint that and say, you know what, something's off, something is wrong, you're not alone, okay? So the healing journey, first and foremost starts with being honest about where you are that is the first step okay i know that i have an issue i may not be able to give full definition to what that issue is i may not be able to <laughs> write out a full sentence on what's wrong with me but i know that there is something wrong and i need help that is the first step of starting your healing journey there is a honest um, uh, uh, declaration or there's an honest um, just opening of I know something is wrong if you can just be honest about that I know something's wrong I know that I need help I know that I need to be able to see a counselor or something to be able to help me that's step one congratulations for you those that's that's that speak that uh, spoke up and said I'm stuck I need help in that area help me with my healing journey you've taken the first step to healing okay and that's being transparent about what's going on and resolved about I have an issue okay so that's step number one step number two do something about that issue okay I have an issue something's wrong 
and now I need to do something about it. So I'm about to list a couple things that people deal with and you can see if you find yourself in this. But I just want you to all to know these are common issues that people deal with. And if you find yourself in here, that means it's time to take an, another step to in the right direction to get healed. All right. So step. So here's here's the thing. If you dealt with abuse, physical, mental or emotional, if you've dealt with abuse in any of those capacities, physical, mental or emotional, whether that's current, previous if it was in the past, excuse me, if you've dealt with any type of physical abuse, mental abuse, or emotional abuse, and you never got any help for it, you need to get some help and some counseling. Let me tell you why. Physical, mental, and emotional abuse shapes personalities, okay? So we wonder why we are timid, or you wonder why, you know, you may have a lot of fear. You wonder why you have a hard time speaking up. You wonder why you have a hard time with affection. You wonder why, you know, you have um, a hard time communicating or just being yourself. You wonder why certain, you know, certain things like that come up. And a lot of times that's from physical, mental, and emotional abuse. If you have experienced that in childhood, more than likely it shaped your personality and who you are today, especially if you've never dealt with it. And you're not living <laughs> at the full potential that you could be living at. And my thing is, when I talk to my clients as well about this, when it comes to abuse, more than likely the person that you are today is not the person that you could be, right? Our our, our personalities have been shaped by physical abuse and that brings fear onto us or mental abuse or emotional abuse that brings fear to you maybe you're a person that feels like okay i'm introverted um i like being by myself but are you really introverted do you really like being by yourself or is that something that was created from a place of abuse where you have gone internal and you find strength only in yourself as a self-protection mechanism. But honestly, if you were to get healed and find out the root issues of what's going on and deal with your childhood past, you may be an extroverted person that loves people and loves being around people, but you've experienced some type of emotional abuse. So you see people as a... Uh, you see people as a stumbling block or a place of that that's not safe for you or any of those things. So you see where I'm going with this. So if you have a if you've experienced abuse in any way or any form, that can shape your personality and who you are today more than likely is not the person that you could be, okay? So we have to deal with that. We got addictions. That's pretty common as well. Anger, super common in men. Women have anger issues and rage as well but men have a lot of that anger issues and what it is is that they're not really in touch or in tune with their emotions and I think that there's other issues that can cause anger as well because the male species has a whole different pressure points in the female species and so there's different things that, that happen but with anger it's because men have not been um, they have not been shaped to be open about their emotions and their feelings, right? So I have, as a man, I have all these suppressed and repressed emotions and I don't know how to deal with them and I don't know how to be open because I've been told that you got to man up, you got to man up, you got to man up, you got to be a man, man up. There's no time to cry. There's no time to be weak. There's no time for all these different things. And that's the worst thing you can tell a little boy. <laughs> that's the worst thing you can tell a, a, a teenager that's growing up is man up, be better, be tougher, you know, all those different things that's shaping a man to tell him don't be emotional don't have emotions emotions are not okay for you to have don't cry don't you know don't be in touch or in tune with what's going on with you internally suppress it get over it move forward you'll be fine and when you shape a man like that you wonder why men have all these anger and rage issues coming out because we were never whether it's male or female created to not have emotions okay so whether you're male or you're female you should have emotions okay now if there's a um, some type of dysfunction in your emotions and the way that you process information and all those different things. That's a whole different story. But normal emotions are normal. And if you shape little boys and teenage boys while they're growing up trying to learn who they are and all those different things, you can't have emotions, suppress those things, be a man, grow up, toughen up. That is going to cause so many different issues in their adulthood. Once they become adults, you're going to you're going to find out that so many different things are going on inwardly with them and then they have this outer exterior of I can't display what I feel and it's almost like a shell when you try to get in there and say you know what's going on what's happening with you you know ex you know express it to me they can't because their whole life they've been shaped to say don't have emotions get over it suppress it move forward okay so those are things that men may deal with anger like I said women deal with anger as well I'm gonna run through these a little bit quicker we have anxiety super popular 
in today's society because why we have all these pressures of perfection that is where anxiety really comes from these pressures of perfection you have to get things right you have to be you know this this way social media displays all these perfect images bodies families lives all these different things and we have this anxiety which which is ultimately the fear <laughs> is what anxiety is we have these anxieties of perfection and how are people going to see me and am I, am I going to do well you know, am I going to achieve these things? Am I going to uh, 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 be successful? You know, am I going to be able to live up to what mommy and daddy wanted me to live up to? Can I can I live up to these social media lives and things in, that people pr um, project as their lives that aren't even really true? So there's, these are anxiety issues that this generation really deals with because it's a perfection issue. Perfection is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest issues that people deal with. Um, in general and it's it's basically saying that it's not okay for me to be flawed it's not okay for me to have issues it's not okay for me to be myself it's not okay for me to be human and so those causes and anxieties within people to live up to this life that they want so bad to be seen as this perfect picture which is just not it's not real so that's where anxiety, a lot of anxiety comes from from this generation as well so then we have abandonment and rejection two common issues that people deal with blended family issues breakups bullying commitment issues communication problems depression divorce emptiness loneliness family problems fear which is another one of the biggest issues people are dealing with forgiveness guilt shame identity issues we got isolation life purpose neglect panic issues paranoia mood swings, self-esteem, self-doubt, trust issues. You see where I'm going with this? These are so many different issues that would all, out of all the people that's on this um, live video right now watching, I'm sure you can find yourself somewhere in there, okay? And then you got overall self-care. Do I care about myself enough to take care of myself, okay? So if you as a viewer can see yourself in one of these issues, all those things that I just listed, I'm sure she, <laughs> she said, yeah, we all need counseling. Exactly, right? We all got something going on inside, okay? So if you can find yourself somewhere in that, that right there tells you, you know what? I need to go see somebody. I need to go ahead and get some some, some of these issues and these deep-rooted problems and these emotional ups, ups and downs and just these things I've just refused to deal with over the years dealt with what is it going to hurt you to um you know what is it going to hurt you to take the step forward and do it right you know it can't hurt you right if anything it's just going to help you if you don't like it you don't got to continue you can find a different counselor but at the end of the day these are issues that almost every single person on this live video can say i have at least one of those issues and if you have at least one of those issues then yes you cannot necessarily self-heal <laughs> you need to go ahead and get a counselor see a counselor do some research and some information about what counseling is and go ahead and take the next step all right so those are the three questions that i wanted to answer do any of you have questions um for me while i'm on this live um in regards to just that area i kind of want to keep it on, on the same topic excuse me i want to keep it on the same topic um but do you have questions while i'm on here about counseling what counseling is how do i start my healing journey how do i continue on my healing journey any of those things um go ahead and put them in the comments and I will try to answer a few for you before I get off. But I hope that this helped you. I hope that you truly, truly, truly enjoyed learning about um, just why counseling is necessary. And just learning that, you know what? I got issues. We all got crazy in us at some point, you know, <laughs> some level. Just go ahead and get it dealt with so that you can get healed and be able to move forward in your life and live a better quality of life. And that's one of the things that I did put in on a status that I put on here not too long ago is that counseling doesn't say that i'm crazy counseling says that i am ready to live a better quality of life i am ready to take the next step in my life to live better to do better <laughs> whether it be for myself or you know family members friends children whatever it may be okay is there a certain amount of time you should give a counselor to see if they're the one great 
question. So my thing is, you're not locked in into a counselor ever. So you can go and, you know, the first session is usually just kind of building rapport and they're asking you a lot of questions about who you are and your history and why you're coming to counseling. And so I would say give your counselor a good three sessions. Um, you know, the first session is definitely going to be more so asking questions about your life and, you know, why you came to counseling and, you know, what, you know, counseling, you know, what do you need from this process and what do you foresee um, uh, uh, this process being? And so that's going to be, that's going to be a session Session one. So I would say give your counselor a good three sessions. If you feel like you and your counselor are just not meshing, if it's not working for you, don't ever feel like you're locked in. You know, like I have to be here. I got to continue with this person. Now, I would say that if you have a habit of jumping from person to person to person to person to person, you may want to talk to that, talk to your counselor about that. And then that's a deeper issue. So you have more so a commitment issue. So you want to make sure that if you are jumping from counselor to counselor to counselor, that you do notice that. Um, but I would say give your counselor like a good three sessions. If it's not working, you know, go ahead and remove yourself, but do the research, find out, you know, reviews from that counselor, what type of counseling that counselor does, because there's just different things. People specialize in different things. You can definitely go on their website, usually to just find out who they are and how their counseling process is. If you go through your insurance, um, usually they have uh, uh, websites as well that there's reviews from a past clientele and different things like that. So I would definitely say give them a good three sessions before you opt out, okay? How do you open up in a counseling session? Well, you have to go in with an open heart first and foremost, okay? And so when you do have a good counselor, they're gonna make you feel comfortable. And you have to realize that, you know, counseling is confidential. So it's not anything anyone's going to go out talking about your business and telling the world about all this stuff that you're coming to counseling about that's confidential so you want to make sure that over time it's going to take um some, some trust building between you and your counselor and your counselor is aware of this a lot of times people come in very um you know just kind of very standoffish like i don't know if i trust this process i don't know if i trust you type of thing but you go in with open open mind knowing that your counselor is there to help you your counselor is not there to harm you your counselor is not there to make your issues worse your counselor is not there to pick on you your counselor is not there to you know make you feel bad about your issues or anything like that so if you encounter someone like that then you do want to exit stage left right you don't want to continue with that person but go in with an open heart my counselor is here to help me my counselor wants me to succeed my counselor wants me to heal my counselor you know wants me to be better as a person so that those that mentality going in will help you open up now you may not open up all the way right away but go in believing that this is a process that's needed for me and i can trust this person so even when you feel like you know i don't trust you i, I, I just don't you know i don't, I don't want to open up blah 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 you know train your mind in advance before you go in there it's okay i can't trust this person i can't trust this counselor this is a good process for me so speak those things over yourself before you even go into the counseling process to help you open up in advance okay what else do we have here how does rejection look? Now, rejection looks different in everybody, okay? So let me just be honest with you is that rejection looks different in every single person. Um, it just depends on the type of rejection that you received in life. So some people can, let's, for, let's say, for example, they have a, a parental wound where they received rejection from a parent. So basically, a parent said, I don't want you. You know, I don't want anything to do with you. You know, uh, I'm not going to be around you. I'm not going to be active in your life. Um, I'm not going to show up for anything for you. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to be a part of your childhood, your upbringing. I'm not going to um, do any of those things. That's rejection. I'm rejecting you. I'm telling you that you're not good enough. You're not worthy of my time. You know, there's something wrong with you. Um, it, it has to be. You're the reason why I'm doing this. Rejection sometimes speaks that way. Even though parents have their own issues, rejection can can definitely say that you're the issue you're the problem I'm rejecting you because something's wrong with you you're you know whatever that looks like that can those are things that rejection says you know I'm not good enough my, my mama or my daddy didn't want to be around me people don't like me people don't love me people don't accept me you know rejection has a lot to do with acceptance as well if you've never been accepted that can also be uh, a way that rejection begins to creep in and it says that something's wrong with me so people that are rejected a lot of times have performance issues right they perform because they want people to love them they perform because they want people to like them they perform because they want people to accept them and that is what rejection usually does um, in lives of people so that's kind of how rejection rejection looks um there's definitely more to it but that's a good overview of of what uh rejection kind of looks like let's do another question 
How do you heal from trauma from domestic violence that was verbal, emotional, mental, along with trauma from my childhood? Trauma is layers, okay? That's a packed question. Trauma has so many layers to it. And like I said, every emotional, mental, physical um, abuse or, uh, you know, just issue in that nature, it affects people differently. So it's hard to say how it, it would it would help you specifically because there's so many layers to trauma. And so... With the whole um, trauma from domestic violence and verbal, emotional, mental abuse, I would definitely say you want to get a counselor. So that's such a jam-packed question. It's hard for me to just list out everything right now. But you want to get a counselor because there are different things that have occurred. And sometimes people suffer from PTSD when it comes to domestic violence and different things of that nature because um, they can be triggered in a situation easily to go back and to revert back to what that, um, that offense looked like. And so you want to make sure that you go to see a, a trained counselor you get someone to be able to help you and walk you through that because memories can come up from trauma that can completely have people ha all over the place you can you know people have just breakdowns you know mental breakdowns because they remember things that they didn't remember before so you have to be very careful with trauma because sometimes there are memories that have been repressed um, that come up when you start dealing with that. And so a trained professional knows how to handle those situations and help you walk through that. So it's a very tricky when it comes to just, you know, abuse and trauma. But I would definitely say go ahead and get a counselor to help walk you through that as soon as possible because you don't want to continue in life with that, um, that, that level and that burden of, you know, that traumatic experience, childhood, and with domestic violence. That is definitely a lot that you have to work through. Okay. Another question, can counseling online or over the phone be effective? I would say that counseling online is effective. There's, um, with technology, just like you can go to school online, um, counseling online is very effective as well because we see face-to-face, -face, just like you can see me. Uh, I'll be able to see you face-to-face. -face. And so I can still read body language. It's still pretty intimate, even though we're not in the same room. Um, I can see how you're responding to things. Um, I can ask questions and, you know, you still feel as if you have this this face-to-face -face interaction. Now, over the phone, um, if it's just like a phone call, it depends on the type of counseling that you're getting. Um, it can be beneficial just depending on what you're getting counseling for. So I would always suggest either in-person or online counseling where you can see that person face-to-face. -face. Phone counseling, I don't, you know, it just depends. It, it, mm. It depends on the issue. So if you're over the phone talking to a person, I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm 100% sold on that one. But uh, definitely in-person or online counseling would definitely be beneficial to anyone okay hello laura good evening to you as well <laughs> okay so if there's any more questions go ahead and put them up i have a couple more minutes but um i did i hope that this really helped you go ahead and share this with people that you feel need to know about counseling if they feel if you feel as if they are um kind of on the fence with the counseling process or just in denial <laughs> that they have issues which is very common people are always in denial about <laughs> having issues and it's like it's okay we all got issues we're not saying that you know this is the end of the world you got an issue i got an issue let's get these issues taken care of right um but denial is one of those things that people just refuse to say i something's wrong with me listen it's better to get the counseling than to be 50, 60, 70 and live in a tormented life because of what happened to you at 10, 20 and 30. OK, so deal with the issue while you can and don't let it grow and you have a better outcome of just living a better life, quality of life in general. OK, um, OK, let's answer these questions. Okay, What do you do when you are speaking with your counselor and she walks out, wa walks out on you? That happened to me. Get a new counselor. <laughs> um, it, if she just walked out on you, I don't know what the situation was. Um, I, you know, I can't speak because I was not there. But if it was just for no reason, out of the blue, kind of strange, I would definitely say you want to get another counselor. Um, if you feel like you want to ask her what happened, you know, why did you did something I said, something I did, you know, why did you walk out of the counseling session? You can go ahead and do that if you want. But if there's not an explanation explanation for that, um, that's kind of odd, uh, really strange for her just to walk out. I would definitely get another counselor and, and get someone that's a little bit more committed <laughs> to your process. Are you doing counseling sessions, Raven? No, I am doing counseling sessions, but 
I am going to be um, taking maternity leave. Most of you or many of you know that I am pregnant, so I am due in November. Um, and so my counseling sessions, which I have clients already, um, and I'll be taking new clientele all, th all through August and September. Um, October is my rest month. Then I'll be on maternity leave, and I will have a um, sign-up session or sign-up uh, form on my website for uh, for my waiting list when I do return. So because I know that when I do return, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of people on that waiting list. I'm going to get that up as soon as possible so that people can book their appointments in advance with me. When I return to, from maternity leave, I'll just be able to, you know, uh, start right away. Um, but it will be a couple months. Um, but definitely check out my website. If you're not on my email list, you want to get on my email list because that is where I'm going to be sending out the uh, form so that people can get on the waiting list and, and you can get first signups. Once I have so many clients, I do close my list because I can only counsel so many people at one time. So you want to make sure that you are on the lookout for that. I did put my website in the, uh, subs or the description of this video. So make sure you check out that. Okay. Well, let me see if this lesson I'm 45 and I have finally decided to get counseling. It was hard to open up. Now it's hard for me to find someone, you know, honestly, it can be hard to find the exact person that you want to work with. But I, you know, honestly, just be open. I know it can be difficult sometimes to find someone that you click with or a counselor that you feel like meets your needs specifically, but just give it time. And I know that um, we have these expectations that we have sometimes that we want a specific person or a specific person to be a certain way. But you know, ultimately, your counselor is there to help you. So give it time to um, build that relationship and see what can come from that. You know, sometimes it takes a couple sessions to really get to the nitty gritty of what's happening in your life and get to the nitty gritty of, you know, different things that you may need help with. So just give it time and just be open to that process. <laughs> I know that can be difficult as well. Okay. I think I've answered all the questions for tonight. You guys were lovely. Such a great, great audience. Um, I appreciate you getting on with me. I will be back on. Like I said, I don't drop the dates that I'm getting back on because <laughs> I'm pregnant and sometimes those dates just go up and down. So uh, I will be getting on again though to be able to answer some more questions because like I said, I got over a hundred questions from you all on Instagram about just the needs that you have and the things that you want answered about this counseling process. So if you you do have more questions for me go ahead and sign up for my email list um when you sign up for my email list you do have the option to reply to the email that you're going to receive with um questions that you have about counseling and just issues that you're dealing with and struggling with um emotionally or, or mentally as well as just soul issues that you're dealing with so go ahead and sign up for my email list um i will have a waiting list coming out soon for my counseling sessions when i do return from maternity leave um and other than that you guys thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for joining me on tonight i cannot wait to talk to you again um, it's going to be a surprise, the questions that I answer next time that I'm on, but I do try to stay around the same topic um, so that we can kind of just stay organized with the answers that I give. But have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and I will talk to you all soon.